Hey guys, here with Sue Johnson. Wake up and live with the arts. Sue, thanks for coming on the show. Well, thanks for having me and thank you for the reciprocity because you were a recent guest on our show. Absolutely. And you are now interviewing me for your, what's the title of this show you're doing? This is Rant and Rave with Don Michaels. Gotcha. So, so Sue, tell me, what is Wake Up and Live with the Arts? It is a YouTube show, and what it does, it celebrates and showcases the diversity of the performing arts, primarily in greater Cleveland, but Northeast Ohio, and when, every once in a while we get a national uh, well-known artist that we get to talk to. So that's what we are. We've been in business for several years. Uh, uh, in earlier years up until now, Lester Bryant has been our senior videographer and now James is our videographer. Plus Lester got us on YouTube so our audience has expanded quite I a see. bit. Yeah. I so see. that's what Wake Up and Live with the Arts is. It's a component of our complete Wake Up and Live's Actors Studio, which is a 501c3 performing arts entertainment an education organization. Okay, so what kind of videos are you guys putting together or what are you doing out there here in Cleveland? You know, what, what are you putting out there, I guess, so to speak? Primarily now, it's mostly um, interviews. We're not doing on location shots like we had been in the past. Okay. Uh, due to uh, Lester's limitations, my mobility, um, limitations and then James has been learning as I said to do the video now coming up we may go out to North Shore Cultural Center for a special project they're doing there Terrence Spivey's the artist the former artistic director here is the artistic director out there but when we can we do performances here we showcase actors doing monologues in fact James just McGilbray just did a snippet of a monologue uh, on our show a little while ago. And sometimes we get dancers or singers or poets or playwrights and we will feature some of their works. Okay, so what what sort of film is that then? I mean I, I know you're like what stands out to you? Um, if, you know, you're doing um musicals, what have you, like, mm -hmm. what, what really stands out for you? Is it more of the, the art side of it, the acting side of it, the, you know, I, I know they all kind of go hand in hand, yes. but what stands out for you? What do you enjoy the most of what you're doing? All of it. All of it? <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I'm a, um, I started out as a stage actor. Okay. I moved into commercial acting, a little tiny bit of film. But uh, it's all very fascinating. You learn a lot from the exposure to all the performing arts. Now, I cannot dance, I cannot sing, but I enjoy it when we occasionally get a singer or a dancer. I enjoy the playwrights who come on and read excerpts, snippets of the work that they've got in development because our playwrights are, um, they do original works as opposed to well-known standard works. So we, um, our playwrights do a lot of one acts that they've created themselves. So the idea is to give them opportunity to showcase their work. And sometimes we even go from a staged reading all the way to a full production of their works because okay. that's what they, they want to do and then hope that a big director will someday say, aha, I must have that play that so-and-so has written. Okay, so when you say one act, it's basically one act, one scene. No, so it's more than one scene. Okay. Yeah. A one act is different. The standard length of play these days, modern days, is two acts. Way back when, the standard play was three acts. When you Shakespeare was five acts, but okay. when you think of all the other playwrights, they're usually three-act plays, if they're full, full productions out of other cities. Well, here too, for that matter. 
But now, um, most new plays are two acts, or directors will look for published, produced plays that are two acts. Okay. Because Very you mentioned off camera about people's attention span. Yes. And it's hard to sit uh, in a theater seat, and most two acts don't run really sometimes more than 90 minutes, and then sometimes they run maybe an hour, hour and three quarters, or maybe two hours at the max. Okay. As opposed, and there might be an intermission, but as opposed to three acts, which can take up to three hours to perform. Okay, so let's go back, let's go back to Sue Johnson. No, let's so. not. <laughs> I want to know, so what got you into this? I know, and you mentioned earlier you started off as a young lady, you know, what brought you to where you are today? Well, it all began when I was a young child. I had a cousin in the business. Her name was Isabel Jane Cooley, and she was in the film business. Okay. And she received a modicum of success. But I always wanted to be an actor because of her. Now, in high school, in junior high, I was too shy to act in front of the curtain, so I would do things behind the scenes, makeup, set design. And in the old days, the, the light board, backstage, you know. Sure. So I would work behind the scenes. And in college, I was still too shy to... Um, you know, to work out front as an actor. Now, I went into teaching, English, reading, and so 30 years passed by, and I was in a plus-size modeling class with my daughter. I don't remember much else about that experience except that, well, I do, yes, I do remember now that I think about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, and this teacher, who I have no memory of who she was, is. And that, that instructor said, modeling leads to acting. And I tell this story often because I swear that that thing behind your ear went doing, I swear. So then I gradually began to start looking for staged readings because that was an easy way to break in to the acting world and I do encourage rookie or aspiring actors to start with staged readings. That means you hold your book or your script as we say and you use it as a support. You don't stand there and necessarily read from it but you use it to guide you and then you, you do kind of um, off book partially but you're holding it Stage readings come in all styles. Some are as simple as sitting at music stands and reading the script. Some you're standing up and reading from the script. Others, like we used to do before we started One Acts, we would still do what we call blocking. The actors move around, still holding book, but we would have limited sets like tables and chairs or a teacup or something and the um, the actors would do a limited blocking experience. Okay, so break break that down for me. So that means basically I'm I'm practicing my voice, I'm practicing movements, yes. um, just familiarizing myself with the script. Of course. And um, is it sort of preparation for? Oh yes, they're rehearsals. Okay. Now, there are times, especially if you are an experienced or veteran actor, that you may only have one rehearsal before you do the stage reading, and that's in front of an audience. Sometimes it's an invited audience, sometimes it's uh, open to the general public, and you charge admission, a nominal fee right, sure. to attend. But, um, Sometimes you only have one rehearsal, but there are limited. There may be, let's say, usually we used to do no more than about three, maybe four if it was a difficult script. And then you perform it, and you do the last rehearsal on the stage where you are performing the actual staged reading. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. 
I can see that being very <laughs> nerve wracking and very <laughs> standard for all these people. Well, so, but you stand in front of this camera, right. and so you're being broadcast. And by the way, Natasha, how old are you, hun? Eleven. You have an eleven-year-old assistant yes. who is running the camera, and so that is something else that you can learn is how to get involved in the business, especially film, commercial, video work, by working the camera. And then when you're on stage, you can learn the whole setup by working backstage, props, scenery, carpentry, um, things of that sort. Okay. Now, you mentioned the actor studio. Now, are, are you, are you in, in, in the organization, are you guys actually training people? Yes. Okay. So how does someone go about finding you and reaching out to you to um, contact? Yeah, contact us at our email address, wake up and lives with an S, wake up and lives at gmail.com. And then you can speak directly to me, and then I will get you involved. Right now, we're doing private coaching, we're not running okay. classes, which we have done. But right now, we are doing private coaching for those who prefer a one-on-one -on -one experience where they come in at a day and time that's convenient to them and to me. And they don't necessarily have to sign up for a series of, of, of uh, sessions. Okay. They can come one time. They can come several times over several weeks, or they may come a couple times and you don't see them again until they've got to prepare for an audition for an upcoming production or when they actually are in the rehearsal process okay. for an upcoming production. So now, do you, is there an age limit, like five no, years to three, 50? Or? No, no, three, well, no, the lower limits are 16, but we go on up. At one time, okay. our eldest actors were 81 and 82 okay. because I subscribe to the theory that you're never too old. Now, primarily, we start with 16-year-olds for our training and so forth, but if, if you have a precocious 11 or 12 or 13 person, child, we will meet with them and then we will refer them to, uh, we'll do a little coaching with them. Then we'll refer them to the appropriate youth oriented okay. acting organization. Guys, stay tuned to the end of the video. I'll have some links so you guys can connect and hook up with, um, with Ms. Johnson here to uh, uh, learn about acting and want to get involved and so forth. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's exciting because I, you know, I do a lot of different shows and I'll, Quite a few of them actually have to do with filmmaking, yes. acting, directing, and so forth. So what your guys are doing is great, and it's um, it's a good thing for the city, um, and just bringing people together. Appreciate you know. that. Yes. Yeah, and we I, try. I love it. Yes. You know, and um, as we talked about on your show, it's you know we all know who the big name guys are, mm -hmm. but who's Sue Johnson, who's Don Michaels, you know, who's Natasha, what have you. So we get in there and we get to know who these people are and. And, and broadcast it out there and, and uh, bring our community closer together. And know? that's the important part of as aspiring actors, even sometimes your experienced actors, performing artists, which include dancers, singers, playwrights, and so forth, aren't aware of the resources. And they only know the, quote, like you said, the big names. Right. And the big names generally aren't interested in you until you have reached a certain level. And even then, Cleveland's a small market, you may have difficulty going beyond um, a certain level in your acting pursuits. Very, very interesting. Yeah. So, um, well, Sue, I think that's all I have for you right now. So I appreciate you coming on the show. Well, I appreciate you having me. Absolutely. And we will repost your uh, your segment, which okay. you did a few weeks back on Wake Up and Live with the Arts. And he was fascinating with his rant and raves. Rant and rave. Rant and rave. Yeah, rant and raving. <laughs> <laughs>
Raising putting Cleveland back on the map. Yeah, raising <laughs> hell around Cleveland. That's it. Yeah. You got a show <laughs> coming up soon? Um, I have um, three or four that I'm still working on getting them put out there. Okay. Um, so I have a lot of shows lined up though, so it's, it's moving along very well. And it, Oh Lord, I'm interviewing you now, and if somebody wants to contact you about being <laughs> on your show, how do they get in touch with you? Um, they would actually just go right to the uh, either the YouTube page or um, the Facebook page, and they would just uh, go to Rant and Rave with Don Michaels, and they would uh, contact me either through email or through my phone number, which is everything's listed there. Okay. And um, we'll get you guys on too. Yeah. So. Well, I'll stop interviewing you now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the interviewee becomes the interviewee, or, yeah. or whatever. Whatever. <laughs> But, ladies and gentlemen, again, stay tuned to the end of this video. We're going to have all the uh, plugins for Miss Johnson here so you guys can contact her and learn a little bit about acting and so forth. She has the private sessions. And um, as always, thanks for tuning in and have a great day. Bye bye.